This is the 2017 Ford Fusion Sport. Now, we talk about this a lot, Scott, about cars that have the sport badge. What does that usually mean? Nonsense. Appearance. Yep. Sport utility vehicle they usually put it on the back of. You know what makes this sporty? They put a different engine and transmission in it. Ooh. That's the that way. actually did something. That's they the probably way. They didn't put sport on the back of this one. <laughs> Yeah, I think it does say sport. It says sport on the floor mats. That's, that's you know. when you know it's serious. Yeah, that's they're getting too serious. So in terms of the Ford Fusion, this came out back in 2012, 2012, 2013. So it's been around for quite a while. And when you look at the exterior, I think a lot of people, when this first came out, thought it was a very attractive design because it kind of had that Aston Martin look to it, the front end did. And over time, I think it's aged pretty well. Most, most agree that it is one of the more less offensive mid-sized cars out there. Uh, this paint job, this is I like it a lot. I think you can't really see it in the sunlight, but when you see it in the sun, it's a really You unique. can't see it in the sunlight, but you can see it in the sun? Yeah, that's not what I meant. But in the sun, it looks really different and unique, and I think it's a cool, car, a cool color for a car like this. It's got some cute sparkles in it. Oh, I know you like sparkles. <laughs> you like the same type of sparkles on your little uh, strawberry shortcake, too, don't you? On my nails. Oh, on your nails? Mm -hmm. God, look how f***ing meaty that model. I know, this trunk... This car is solid as hell. It feels really solid. Yeah, it's all just f***ing for looks, though. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of it is. I mean, that's amazing how thick it is. The trunk. Man, do you see the magnets on them speakers? I know. Holy shit. Yeah, they're beefy. But I think those double as your, it's all your bass comes out of there because all the other speakers are tiny. I forgot to wear my piss on Ford shirt. Uh, you blew it. Scott. You're well, all American here. It looks like a Mazda. You're, no. Mazda 6? No, it's not. It has nothing to do with the Mazda 6. This is the CD4 architecture, which is Ford's global platform architecture that is shared with a ton. <laughs> the... Uh, the Mustang? No, it's not shared the with the Focus. Mustang. The MKZ, the Escape. I, I can't even name them all. The, this structure is shared with. Uh, and the reason they did that is that, to same, save money. Same reason they put a plastic oil pan on it, too. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, you found something interesting here. What is that? It's leaking. Leaking oil. From mm, where? Don't know. Maybe from, turbo? It's from up top, though. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, maybe I should check the oil before I drive out of here. It's under warranty. Yeah, that doesn't mean I'm gonna drive it with no oil in it. <laughs> but yeah, up front, uh, there is a lot of use of aluminum up here. Uh, this is, you see more aluminum here than you see in most cars, honestly. You have uh, an aluminum hub, lower control arm. Uh, there's different bracing that's aluminum. The, some parts of the carrier are aluminum. This is, I mean, it, you know, this isn't what you see in a typical mid-sized car. Now, something interesting to note, the last generation Fusion had double wishbone in the front. This goes to struts. Uh, not that that's a big deal. It's got digi struts. It's got digi struts. And digi sway bar links, yeah, both well, sides. Yes, that's true, it does. It doesn't have digi sway bar It links. does. No, those it's are got... ride height sensors. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's got traditional sway bar lengths, but yeah, it has right height <laughs> sensors. The shocks are electronically adjusted through the little motor modules that change whether you're in sport mode or you're not in sport mode. And they're surprisingly well set up. This I was afraid when I heard sport and sport mode together on one model that this would ride like Does it shit. have race mode? No, it doesn't. Scott, in the back of the Mondeo, which this is we got a world video. record for the biggest muffler. That thing is pretty preposterous. There's got to be some reason for airflow that they chose to use that size and shape to flow air out the back. But something you noticed about this exhaust? Hmm. It's duals almost. Almost duals. And it runs from the cat back in one piece. It's tough. Which means that's going to be fun when you order that part for this thing. It's going to ship 
And it's gonna be the size yeah, of the car. Yeah, I want to see the box that comes in. <laughs> I know this muffler is huge. It would be like uh, probably a patio door size. Anyway, in the back, Scott, uh, we have an AWD on-demand all-wheel drive system. What's AWD stand for? All-wheel drive. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So this is a differential. I was hoping it was an RWD unit. No, it's not our RWD unit, but it's good that it has all-wheel drive because if you drove this, or when you drive this, it would be a nightmare in front-wheel drive. I mean, it's crazy. So, yes, this on-demand unit, this is a Ford uh, differential, and it's got a special feature back here as well. This car seems to like to drip fluids all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's got a leaky differential. That's seeping. Seeping. Okay. It's sweating. It's sweating. Why would it sweat? From those hard workouts you give it. Yeah, that's true. It has 8,000 miles on it, and I'm sure about 99% of those miles have been under punishment. So yes, more aluminum back here. Control arms look very Mustang to me, but you know, of course, it is a Mustang. It's a freaking four-door Mustang. Just because it's made in flat rock doesn't mean it's a Mustang, Scott. Now that could mean the same workers were touching and. And it's also this. got digi sway bar links in the back too. You know, somebody's gonna take you the wrong way one of these times and think that you really. I think, think they that take means. me the wrong way a lot of times, <laughs> and that's what makes it entertaining. Yeah, true. Well, let's take a look under the hood. I'm tired of being under here. I don't want to get rust in my eye. I use the zip gun to tighten the spark plug, so I don't know what I was doing. Oh, you use a zip gun? Yeah, until it, until it cracks off. Then I can sell my head. I see a little freaking 1.5. I believe that Civic over there has got 1.6. Yeah, that Civic is tough. Tough as nails. See you know how much power that thing had? That doesn't matter. We're talking about this boosted. That's true. We're talking about the Fusion EcoBoost V6. Saloon. And, you know, we talk, we complain about this with a lot of the mid-sized cars that are out there now. They are dropping V6s like they are some type of STD. You can't get a V6 in any of them. They're all going to four poppers or four popper turbos, and it's not the same. And you get behind the wheel of this car, and I don't care. You can forget about it if you don't like Ford. If you don't like uh, the interior, the exterior, when you get behind here, you think, man, I couldn't go back to driving a four-cylinder mid-sized car after driving this. It's that good. So it's something to note. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of complication in repairing this. This is shoehorned in here. I can't imagine. I, can't, I don't remember what the 3.5 or 3.3 liter the twin turbo in the MKZ that puts out 400 horsepower, I can't, I, I don't remember how big that is, but I'm sure it's tight as hell, much like this. But um, let's take a drive and just see what it's like. If you bought this, would you put blow-off valves on it? I would. I I'd would, too. The loudest ones. And I put va a vape vent in the car, and then I'd run vents here so I could hear the blow-off through the vape vent. This is an excellent time to talk about ride quality because when you hear a trim level with the term sport, so many cars manufacturers decide, well, we're going to make the car feel sporty by increasing the damper rates and the spring rates where you get in it and you're like, why is this thing so choppy when it really shouldn't be? And furthermore, it doesn't handle well at all either. So what they've done here is they've figured out a way, and a lot of it has to do with the chassis. To, to give you two elements. When you go into sport mode, it still feels solid. It still feels uh, un, not uncomfortable. When you're in normal mode, this is definitely probably one of the better mid-sized cars in terms of damping and just overall solidity. And 90% of that is because the chassis in this car. It's shared with the MKZ, which is another extremely well set up car in terms of ride quality and comfort. This is no different. When you're driving aggressively, you never feel like you're getting your teeth chattered out or it just gets real rubbery or jittery. It's just always well composed. So that's one of the better parts of the Fusion, namely compared to some of the competitors here. They, they do have this right. But one of the negative parts about it is, as you can hear, it has fake engine noise. And it's when you hit the sport button when you're full throttle, which I'll do this right now. 
when you switch between modes between sport and you turn it off there's that millisecond delay where it kills the fake engine noise and it's like i wish ford would just stop this or at least give you a way to turn it off because it sounds horrible it's annoying and it doesn't sync up sometimes there's times where it will kind of get confused at the the revs that the motor's making and it will make it'll hold the consistent tone of the engine even though the engine rpms are raising and it'll hold and it sounds like a cvt and it's one of the most cheesy annoying parts about this car that is grated on my nerves the more that i drive it now if you're somebody that has no idea what that sounds like or it's not a big deal to you you may just ignore it and think wow that sounds like it's a loud exhaust or intake but for me it's it's almost a deal breaker the fact that I can't turn it off in here now the transmission it allows you to go in sport mode which kind of holds revs more and then you can use the paddles which again I said earlier they're kind of useless it's pseudo rev matches downshifts but it's just so slow to do it and then when you mash on the gas it just takes over for you anyway i would say you know what never use the paddles unless you were in like a, a hilly area where you had to you know downshift to get some engine braking they're just really annoying the other thing is that transmission is it is quick to respond but it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense doing what it's doing a lot of the times even in sport mode now it is extremely smooth and it is quick to shift but some of its shifting behavior is just strange and it's one of those you just have to get in the car and see if you know namely when you drive it more aggressively if it's going to annoy you like it does me now last but not least i say this about turbocharged cars and it's not just the Ford but this specific Ford especially when you get in it sometimes namely in the right conditions when the car is a little bit cooler you know you haven't been driving it a lot you hit the gas and you think my god this thing is really quick and then you start to mash on the gas some more as you drive it as it heats up as probably that intercooler heat soaks you start to feel timing get pulled out of it. It doesn't feel as fast, and the power delivery seems to be very inconsistent. There's times where I'm like, why does this thing feel so sluggish? And out of other times, I'm like, holy crap, does it get, throw you back in your seat? And that's one of the problems with some of these Eco Turbo motors. There are trade-offs in terms of performance because it, it lacks the consistency of a lot of naturally aspirated platforms where you hit the throttle and it does the same thing every time. You lose very little performance and in here it is noticeable. So it's something to note when you're driving it to see if you experience that same type of sensation. These paddles are pretty much worthless. Man, this thing is quick. <laughs> and the all-wheel drive system works so well here, it's crazy. Roads are slippery with salt and it's a little damp, but this is no issue. Uh, this is where this car is going to blow the doors off pretty much every other mid-sized car. There's just no way around it. You have high horsepower, all-wheel drive. Uh, it does push a little bit. It does understeer a little bit. But the all-wheel drive system is intelligent enough to keep transferring power to the back when you need it. And it is a remarkable experience for the mid-car segment and namely this price range. You have to go into like luxury car, you know, Acura TLX, uh, your entry-level BMWs, uh, those type of cars to kind of get this level of performance. And I think this is going to be the biggest selling point for the Fusion Sport compared to every other car out there in the midsize segment. Now it's time to talk about the negatives and 
just to be straight, I was completely surprised at how good this car is overall. Uh, it's amazing what adding high horsepower torque and an all-wheel drive system will do to a vehicle like this. But when you put all that aside, you're left with a car that has some fundamental issues. And that is Ford is way behind on their interior space. Now they've made improvements here to ergonomics with this dial shift knob, not to take up as much space. And for the most part, it works. Uh, they've made some other improvements in terms of ergonomics and just design in here but it just feels so dated. It feels so industrialized. It feels like I'm in a rental car. And you know, if you're somebody that owns this vehicle or somebody that is a huge Ford fan and you really want this or like this, I'm just gonna say, you have to get in and out of all these cars. You have to get in and out of all the cars to see the fact that so many manufacturers have made so many improvements on the interior space. The attention to detail is there with other brands that it is not in here. And it's not just the Fusion. You get into cars like the Focus, the Fiesta, the Mustang. It's one of the areas where they need to spend a lot of time rethinking what they're doing here because this is, you know, it's a clean design. It's just not, just doesn't feel special. I'm sorry. Okay, one of the last two negatives. I don't know if it's just specific to this Fusion, but I'm constantly coolant slushing around in the heater core on the interior. It sounds like somebody's flushing a toilet and I could be at a stop, I could get going and then I randomly hear it and it's kind of annoying. Uh, and it's something that I haven't noticed on any other car in a long time. So it's something to note. Really to kind of tie this up, I would say this vehicle is pretty damn good. Uh, just the, the horsepower and the torque make up for so many deficiencies on so many cars. Uh, this does more than that. This is a complete package. And I think if you're looking at a car, if you're looking at a mid-sized car and you don't care about fuel economy uh, and you're, you're willing to pay a little bit more for the performance aspect, there's nothing better than this. It really is extremely quick for what the hell you're dealing with. And um, I'd be curious to see what some of the owners think about it and, you know, people that are going to test drive this back to back with like an Accord V6 or a Camry V6. Um, I can't imagine those cars keeping up with this too well. So uh, thanks again for watching. See you next time.